I didn't call on many people last time. I think, uh, Nas, you're up. Derivative of the top is Nas. Derivative of the top. E to the x times one times oh okay never mind minus minus no plus plus e to the e to the, e to the negative. negative x okay minus two minus two okay so Emmanuel okay. why did he put plus here is Nas wrong why is there a plus here. He took the derivative of this with the negative in front and changed that to a plus. Why did he do that? Do you all see why? Okay, so when you're taking derivative of e to the negative x, right, when you take derivative of this, you get itself, right? But then you have to take derivative of what's up here. What's the derivative of what's up here? Negative 1, right? And that negative 1 is going to come out and change that negative to a positive. Got it? And then minus two, we all good with that? One? Is one here? Where's one? I don't think I've seen one in a while. Jace, you're up. You get, you get the bottom one, Jace. What's derivative of the bottom? One minus cosine of x. Okay, good. Now, Emily? Hey, Emily. You get to do the limit now, Emily. So let's see, what do we get on top, Emily, when we take the limit as t goes to zero? So tell me what this is. If x is, if x is zero, right, going to zero, what's e to the zero? One, then, plus, It's, it's still zero, right? Because negative zero is the same as zero. So e to the zero again, which is going to be one, right? And then minus what? Okay. Yeah. So the top is headed where? Zero, right? Okay. How about the bottom, Emily? To zero, right? So cosine of zero is one. So we get one minus one on the bottom, so that's zero. So Emily, what do we have to do now because we get zero over zero again? Go the, do the L'Hopital. Right? And Rasul is going to tell us what we get when we do L'Hopital's. L'Hopital. Rasul? Top. Derivative. Okay, it is the x. Be careful on this one. So you're taking derivative of that now, right? Okay, so will, will it still be plus? Remember, derivative of this is itself, right? But then times derivative of what's up here, which minus. is negative one. So that negative one will come out and change that, yeah. right? So minus e to the negative x, and then we still need that one, right? Derivative of that? Zero. Zero. So that's it on top. You want to do the bottom? Yeah. What's the derivative of the bottom? Zero. So it's one is zero. Zero? And minus cos is uh, sine x. Yes. And that's going to be a minus, right? But yeah. derivative of that's minus sine, so minus minus plus, so sine x. Everyone good with that? Okay, Alberto okay. is going to tell us the limit. Okay. So it's one, minus one, again. one minus one again? Crap. Over? Zero again, right? So we get zero of zero again, right? So, okay, so I've heard this said by several students now. When we did this, we did L'Hopital's rule once, okay? Do this, we did it twice. We're going to use L'Hopital's rule a third time. We're not doing a third derivative because if we were taking derivatives of this, we would be using quotient rule. We are applying L'Hopital's rule for the third time. I'm just, just trying to get the language right, that's all, okay? We will be doing a derivative on the top and bottom for a third time, but technically, because it's not quotient rule, it's not technically a derivative of the whole thing. Yes? Isn't the top just going to be like flip-flopping this whole time? 
Yeah, there is a pattern now at this point happening on the top. Uh, will it always be zero? Let's see. What's going to happen on this one? Limit. So we're doing L'Hopital again. Why don't you go ahead and tell us what the derivative of the top is going to be? Of the top. We want derivative of this now. What is the derivative of this? E to the x plus? Okay, so e to the x plus e to the negative x. And then over what? Cosine x. Okay, so now notice up here when we let x go to 0, we, we don't get 1 minus 1, we get 1 plus 1 right? Get one plus one this time. Because it was the minus two that, that kept us at zero. But this time, that's going to be one plus one. So we get two on top. And on the bottom, cosine of zero is one. So we finally got there. It's two. Now, in case we have forgotten what we're doing here, I kind of have. <laughs> Uh, we need to get going in this section. I'm kind of going too slow right now. Telling stories, having a good time. Oh, whoa. I wanted to just kind of remind you what we are doing. So if I were to take the original problem, e to the x, right, minus e to the negative x minus 2x and divide that by x minus sine x. What we're doing is we're looking, we're looking at the graph of that function. Okay, so if you were to graph this as a function, what we're doing is we're figuring out what happens, what that function approaches as you approach zero. So in my picture here, that is the graph of that function. At zero, this thing is undefined and has a hole. What we have determined, though, is that as you approach zero from both the left and the right, you're approaching two. Do you all see that? That's two, right? Two, four, six. So we, we have figured that out without having to look at the graph just by using L'Hopital's rule. Okay, what one, which one were you telling me I should do? 32. 32. Yeah, in a minute. We, let's do 24. Root x times e to the negative x over 2. And that's infinity, I believe? No. Yeah. x is going to infinity. root x times e to the negative x over 2. All right, this problem is a little bit tricky. I'm just going to remind you of something real quick here. That's the graph of e to the x, right? And this is the graph of e to the negative x, right? It's a reflection over the y-axis. OK, so let's let x go to infinity. Uh, Chris, where's Chris? Chris, you get to tell me what happens here. Where is that headed? Infinity. So what we're getting here is infinity. And then, Chris, this is times, right? Times, what happens if I say e to the infinity over 2 is still infinity? So e to the negative infinity. Chris, what does that mean? Like, where is that going? Where is e to the negative infinity going? So look at these. This might help. Mm. What I'm looking at is what is e to the negative infinity, right? Do, do you all agree this is kind of what we have going on here? Maybe we won't look at this, OK? Is that not the same as this? Yeah. Right? Is this easier to tell what's happening? Yeah. Fixed on top, the bottom is getting huge, right? This number should go down to nothing. 
So this, this is headed towards zero. You follow? So we have something like this, infinity times zero. Chris, does that make sense? Okay. What I was trying to get from the picture is that if we look at the graph of this, right, the graph of that should look like this one. And so what we're saying is what happens is x goes to infinity. So what happens is we go this way on that graph. Where is it approaching? It's approaching zero, which is the same thing we get here. OK, is that an indeterminate form? This is an indeterminate form, right? It is. But you cannot use L'Hopital. Why? Because it's not zero over zero, and it's not infinity over infinity, right? So because we don't have what we need, we need to try and convert this. And so every single time you ever get to a limit that looks like this, what you're going to do is one of the following two things. You're either going to grab the first one and drop it to the bottom, or you're going to grab the second one and drop it to the bottom. Now, let me show you those. I'm going to show you both. For this problem, if I were to take this first one and drop it, this is what I mean by that. That's what I mean by dropping it. You can't just drop it to the denominator, but you can rewrite it. Do you all agree that having 1 over root x on the bottom is the same? I would flip that root x up and it would come up here? So this is the same, right? Just looks different. So that's option one. Take this one and drop it. Or we could do the other one and drop it. So watch me drop the other one. Now, when I drop the other one, watch how I drop the other one. Oops. What did I do there? I just brought it down, right? It was a negative exponent. So I dropped it to the bottom as a positive exponent. The whole idea is I'm trying to turn multiplication into a ratio, right? So I can, I can move this one down like that, or I can move this one down, but th I would have to do 1 over root x. What's your question, Chris? So I can, you have to change the sign? Nope. Mm -mm. Yep. Change the sign where? Uh, like out front? Yeah. No, it doesn't become negative. All I'm doing is. If you wanted to move this up, you would multiply the top by what? What would you multiply the top by if you didn't want to do this? Root x over 1, right? Just like that. And root x over 1 is root x, and it would just come through here, and it would be that. Is that all right? Yeah. So here's where we are. We're looking at these two. Now check this out. Let x go to infinity right now. Where does this go? We just talked about it just a second ago. Where does that go? Zero. The top goes to zero. Now, look at this one. All together, where does that one go? Also goes to zero. Because you have a fixed number over something that gets big. So that ratio goes to zero also. Do you see how we have turned it into zero over zero? So I could use L'Hopital on this, couldn't I? Now let's look at this one. What happened when I converted it this way? Where does the top go? x goes to infinity. That goes to infinity over. Now this is positive now, right? So e to the infinity would be what? Infinity. So that's positive infinity. So now we have infinity over infinity. So you could use L'Hopital's rule here. You all see that? Mm -hmm. So any time you have infinity times 0 or the other way around, 0 times infinity, doesn't matter how these are written, you just have to pick one of them and drop it. You can do both ways, but which of those two ways would you prefer to work with? Would you rather take the derivative of this over the derivative of that, or would you rather do derivative of this over derivative of that? Left? Let's take a vote. Left? Okay. Right? I, th I think right's easier. Let me, let me just show you. Let's, uh, let's do the left just so you can see how how nasty that derivative actually is. Well, nasty compared to that one. So if I did L'Hopital right now, 
what would the derivative of e to something be? Itself, right? e to the negative x over 2 times, now you have to take derivative of this, don't you? And remember, that's really, that's really negative 1 half x, right? That's what that is. Negative x over 2 is really negative 1 half x. So what's the derivative of this? Negative 1 half. So I'd have a negative 1 half here. Over, here's the, pro here's the part that sucks. Because this is not derivative of top and bottom separately. No, 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 no. You cannot do that. You must take derivative of that, right? So you're now trying to take the derivative of this, right? Which is actually x to the negative 1 half, isn't it? Because you'd have to bring that root x up. And the derivative of that is negative 1 half x to the negative 3 halves, because you have to use the power rule, right? That derivative looks pretty nasty, doesn't it? I mean, you could do it, right? Negative 1 half x to the negative 3 halves. Thing is, you look at this, and I think you're going to start to get a little nauseous, aren't you? Doesn't that make you nauseous just to look at that? I mean, yeah, you could cancel those, all right. So maybe not as nauseating. But what is that doing? So you'd have to play with that. Let's just see what happens on this one. If we do L'Hopital for this one, Brian, do you see, what I, you see why that, that way looks pretty bad? Okay, now this one, what's the derivative of root x? Just 1 over 2 root x, right? Just super clean because, see, it's not 1 over root x, it's just root x. So derivative of top, uh, uh, top is that. And what's the derivative of the bottom? Yeah, so, yeah, you can't get around it. It's, it's e to the x over 2 times a half. That's still pretty bad, isn't it? I would argue that that's not much better. Okay, now what? So what now? What's that? Yeah, let's just see what happens, right? This looks bad, doesn't it? This, I mean, this looks like we're in a bad spot. Like if I have to do L'Hopital again, I'm not happy. But do I? So where is it headed? So uh, uh, Michael, Michael, Michael. Michael wants to participate today. Michael, where's that headed? His x goes to infinity. Zero, okay? Michael, where's this headed as x goes to infinity? That's if x, if x was going to zero, then that would be e to the zero would be one. But x is going to infinity. So what happens if this gets huge? e to a huge power would become infinity, infinity right? Times a half, still infinite. So we have this. That's not L'Hopital, right? But is it a problem? Remember, I said some things are problems, some things aren't. That's headed where? Zero. Zero. Why? Well, that's not fixed, though. That's not actually zero. It's headed to zero, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, we all need to understand this right here and why this is zero. So we're going to look at this as like, you know, numerator and denominator, and they're talking to one another, right? The numerator is like, hey, I want to be really small, right? I want to be, sm I want to be a small number, real tiny, tiny. And the, the bottom is like, well, well, that's wonderful because I'm going to divide you, which is going to make you smaller, right? Because we know that when the denominator gets big, the number gets small, right? So the top is like, I want to be small. The denominator is like, I help you, yes? So this goes to zero. What if it was the other way around? What if it was that way? Where's that headed? So the numerator's like, I want to be big. I want to be big. And the denominator's like, what does the denominator say? I'm going to be a very small number, right? And what happens when you take a number and divide it by a very small number? It gets what? Take the number 10 and divide it by 0 0.001. Is that number bigger than 10 or smaller than 10? How many times does that go into that? A lot of times, right? We, we have an issue. You forgot the two. It Where? It what two? Oh, I forgot. I did forget the two here. Thank you. I almost made it through the day without making a mistake. I was telling my wife, I was like, man, I made three mistakes the other day. I'm all upset. She's like, you have a lot on your mind. 
So no excuses. No excuses. Yeah, it doesn't change the answer. It still goes to zero, but it's still wrong. I will, I will get three lashings for that. <laughs> so, what is this headed towards? This is headed towards infinity, right? The number on top wants to get big. You divide it by a small number that makes it even bigger. This is the reverse. Uh, the, I erased it. This, oh, no, here. This is the reverse of that. The number on top is getting small. The bottom one's dividing it into smaller pieces. It gets small. So the answer here is zero. No L'Hopital, right? No L'Hopital. We're done at this point. Okay, so if you see this, you drop one down, right? There's two different paths you can go down. Usually one is better than the other. Limit x goes to infinity. Yeah, x times tangent of 1 over x. <clears throat> oh, you know what? It wasn't my wife I was telling. It was my brother. We were in the waiting room during my dad's surgery, and I was telling him, Man, I think I'm getting old, man. Making mistakes. All right, where's this going, um, Trey? What form do we have here, Trey? Infinity times. So, Trey, where does this go right here? As x goes to infinity, what does that head towards? Zero. And then what's tangent of zero? Zero. Okay. You looked hesitant there, but yes, tangent of zero. Remember the picture of tangent looks like that. So at zero, you are zero. All right, so um, Trey, we get, to, we get to drop one of those down, right? Which of the two, just by looking, x, right? D does everyone agree by dropping x that seems like that would be like the better thing to do? Okay, let's try it. No L'Hopital, right? I'm not doing L'Hopital. I'm doing some, just, this is just what we would consider algebra, right? This is just some algebraic move here. Now, Trey, when I drop x down, what does it become on the bottom? Well, at, how do I write it on the bottom? Do I just write x on the bottom? Can't just be x. 1 over x, okay? Right? 1 over x. X drops down as 1 over X because really it's just we're just rewriting it. We're not changing it. We're not we're just rewriting it. Now Tatum, what do we get now if we let X go to infinity? What form do we have here, Tatum? Top is 0 and the bottom 0 again, right? So we can use L'Hopital, right? Okay. Here comes the L. L'Hopital. L'Hopital. We're almost through all these. Aaron? Aaron's not here. Savannah. Hi, Savannah. All right, so Savannah, you get the derivatives. Mm -hmm. So derivative of tangent of something that's arctangent. That's arctangent. Um, that secant, secant squared. Yeah. Good. So I just it, I can tell the neurons are firing. That's good. I mean, like in the right direction. So derivative of tangent of something is secant squared of that something. Secant squared of that something, right? But we're not done, right, Savannah? Yeah. That's a chain rule. Mm -hmm. So you have to take the derivative now of what's here. Now, do y'all know how I've, I asked you to kind of memorize that this one was 1 over 2 root x? And I just forgot the 2 a second ago. 1 over x does come up enough that maybe it's worth it for you to start putting this into the memory banks. And the answer is negative 1 over x squared. And 
you can see that it's that if you just rewrite that as x to the negative 1 and then take the derivative. Right, that's x to the negative 1. Take the derivative, so negative 1 comes out. Subtract 1 from there. So you get negative 1 x to the negative 2. And then you drop the x squared down and you get this. Okay, so I think that happens enough that you should maybe start putting that somewhere in there if there's any more room. Okay, uh, so Savannah, I still have out here, right, negative 1 over x squared. But Savannah, I need to do the bottom, right? What's the derivative of the bottom? The same thing. Oh, negative 1 over x squared. And they will cancel, won't they, Heidi? Yeah. When they cancel, Heidi, you already answered one, but you want to keep going? Um, what do I do now, Heidi? Let it go to infinity. So we're trying to figure out, let's see if, if x goes to infinity, 1 over infinity, that's 0. So really we're trying to figure out what secant of 0 is, right? And then we're going to try and square that. That's what that means, right? That's what secant squared. So what's secant of 0? What is secant by definition? 1 over cosine. So this is the same as saying what, it, what is 1 over cosine of 0? Right? That's what that's saying? And cosine of 0 is 1. 1 over 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So the numerator is headed where? 1. And the denominator canceled, didn't it? So your answer is 1. So this is one of those situations where, you know, this one right here is like, I want to be big, I want to be big. And this one's like, no, I want to be 0, I want to be 0. And then they sit there and they argue and argue and they compromise. They say, okay, we'll, we'll just meet, we'll just meet, we're just going to be 1. So we're going to approach 1. There was a request for number 32. Lots of examples today, huh? Today would have been a good day to do some classwork, but we just I think you just have to see a lot of this first before you can go out there and start getting your hands dirty. Okay, natural log of x to the seventh minus one, and then we have minus natural log of x to the fifth minus one. There we go. It looks bad, doesn't it? So x is approaching 1, but see the little plus there? It's from the right side. And the reason why that's important in this problem is that if we're approaching 1 from the right, then our numbers are a little bit bigger than 1, right? Like 1.0001, something like that. And imagine if I took a number like 1.001 to the 7th power, that would be bigger than 1, right? And then I subtract 1, that would be a positive number. And that's important because we have to take natural log of it. And you, can only, you can't take the natural log of a negative number. So if, if this plus wasn't here, then you would actually have problems coming in from the other side. You couldn't do it. So we can only talk about a one-sided limit for this particular problem. So that's just the author being very careful and making sure that this makes sense. All right. What's that? Pro OK, yes, properties of logs is no problem with me. but. Before properties of logs, Derek is going to tell us what form we have. So Derek, where's this going? Right here. What's that approaching? If x is approaching 1, right, that's approaching 0. And then natural log of 0 is approaching where? Don't, no one say anything. I'm going to draw it for Derek. So that's the graph of natural log. So if the inside, the argument is approaching 0, right? Natural log of 0 from here, where is it approaching? What's the inside of the natural log approaching? You, you just told me that, right? It's approaching 0. So what you're saying is, Go look at the natural log function and ask yourself what happens as you approach zero. 
So what, here's the natural log function, right? Here's zero on the x-axis. What happens as we approach that? Where does our function go? Negative infinity, okay? Goes to negative infinity. Everyone good with that? So Derek, this is headed towards negative infinity, the whole thing right there, negative infinity. And then minus, Derek, this is the same thing, isn't it? This will, yeah, so what's going to happen is we're going to have zero here, and then natural log of zero is headed to negative infinity, but it's minus, so minus minus is plus. So we get this. And Derek, is that an indeterminate form? Yeah. It is, right? That's the same as infinity minus infinity, right? So it's indeterminate. So the, the, the ones that we've seen so far that have infinity minus infinity or, or something like this, we've tried to break it into a product, right? Like factor something out. And this one though, breaking it into a product is not gonna work because you, you can't factor anything out, right? But we have properties of logs. We have two logs with subtraction, don't we? So why don't we turn this into a single log but it'll be a single log with what inside of it? Yeah, it'll be division, right? It'll be a quotient. So what goes in the numerator? Nope, the natural log's already accounted for. So just x to the seventh minus one over x to the fifth minus one, right? And now, this is, this is kind of a, a pivotal moment. We would like to check again to see what happens. As x goes to 1, right here, what do we get? 0 in here. We get 0 again, right? We're getting 0 over 0. The natural log part, we don't even know yet because we don't know what this is. So what we need to do at this point is kind of like on the side here, just figure out what the limit as x approaches 1 from, uh, one from the right is of x to the 7th minus, uh, yeah, x to the 7th minus 1 over x to the 5th minus 1. And we already said that that looks like 0 over 0, right? So we can use L'Hopital rule. Right, Edward? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can. All right. So, Edward, you're going to use L'Hopital on this. So, Edward? What's the derivative of the top? 7x to the 6th. Good. Bottom? 5x to the 4th. Right? Karen? Right. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, if I ever know who y'all are, it would be a miracle. I'm not good at it. But I knew it was this general vicinity. Okay. Karen, a lot of people make mistakes at this point, okay? What they do is they, I don't know, they do L'Hopital again. They just get carried away with L'Hopital. They just start, ah, I'm just going to L'Hopital it down until it gives me a number. And if you did that, if you just kept on doing L'Hopital here, you would eventually get to like a number over a number. But the problem is you don't have L'Hopital, do you, Karen? Because what are you getting here when you, when you do this limit, Karen? So as x approaches 1, what, is, what does this become? You're just doing like 1 to the 6th, right? 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, then times 7. So. Seven. So you just get seven on top, and on the bottom you get just five, right? And that's it. You're yes. Is that a question? One from the right. What did I say? Did I say one from the left? Yeah, but never It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect this because this is approaching one, right? So as that gets closer to one, to the sixth power, that should be really close to one still. Okay. So that means. Something really close to 1 times 7 is something really close to 7. And then same idea here. 
The reason we had to have it here is because when you put these two together, we needed a positive number in order to do natural log. Okay. We good, Karen, with this? So we're not done, though, because this, this is not our answer. Our answer is back here. Our answer is natural log of what? Seven-fifths. So it's like we had to go figure out what was in here first. We went and did that. We did L'Hopital. We got seven-fifths. Then we come back over here. We know that this limit goes to the natural log of seven-fifths. That's our answer. All right. That should get you started. Um, there are still, we still have very conveniently avoided these, right? Those three forms, we have avoided them. And we will do those next class immediately after our quiz. So I would expect a quiz to cover L'Hopital's rule up through number 32 in the homework. So anything I assigned for homework from 1 to 32, anything in there is fair game, all right? Anything past 32, I won't quiz you on because we haven't talked about it. And then, of course, you could have something from 3, 5. No, wait, hold on. No, not 3, 5. Wait, no. 3, 5. 3, 5, or I already gave you a quiz on 3, 3, didn't I? Yeah, so I'm looking 3, 5, and 3, 6. Uh, no, <laughs> sorry, 3, 5, and 3, 7. And I promised you last time, at least on this quiz, you're going to get problems directly from your homework. Directly from your homework. So absolutely no surprises, but come prepared, and then you'll do well, right? I'll see you on Thursday. Have a great day. Lopatow.